What is up my dudes? Today I'm doing just a standard wash on this Thor motor coach. It is the 24 foot Vegas. It is tan and it is oxidized and this color is just really known for oxidizing a lot. And this is what I would call a decontamination wash. It's not like a standard wash I would do on a painting coach or on newer gel coat that still has a lot of shine left to it. So whenever it's um, flat like this, I take a whole different procedure to washing it. And I'm going to walk you through the soaps that I use, the tools that I use, my setup, all that stuff. So as you can see, like I showed you in my other video, I got my six foot ladder up front for holding my brush, my foam cannon, stuff like that, so I'm not setting it in the dirt. At the back, I got my eight foot ladder set up so I can access the roof. I got the awning out. On the driver's side, there is a slide, so I got the slide out. And this road that I'm on is like a damn freeway, so I got my cones out. And one quick thing I wanna show you, a lot of times when you have this style awning with these arms, they have a wind sensor on them. So when you're on the roof and you're washing it with the pressure washer, the wind sensor will feel that vibration, it will think that it's wind, and it will automatically pull that in. So here's the solution. Come on this particular model, right when you come in the door on the left, there's this power switch. It's gonna flip it one time, the red light turned off, and now that function is disabled, so now when you're washing that awning, it's gonna stay out, okay? All right, so now let's get into what products we're gonna use. All right, so going in the bucket is this soap called Extreme. Now, Extreme is a lot like Purple Power. It's a lot like Dawn. It's a really strong soap. It's a heavy degreasing soap, and it's just gonna help strip a lot of that flat chalkiness off of the coach, okay? Um, so that's just going in the bucket. So I'm gonna be dunking uh, my brush in there as I wash. It's not going in my foam cannon. It's just going in the bucket. In my foam cannon is Dawn this soap. Just like I said, it's the Dawn is a really good degreasing soap. It's gonna help really break down that uh, surface oxidation and strip it off the coach. And it's gonna make it just clean up a lot nicer, strip the dirt down, all that stuff. Okay, for the wheels, we got Purple Power. They're really simple wheels, so we just got a tire brush, this brush, and then we're gonna wash the whole coach, including the roof, with this deck brush, okay? Since it's oxidized, we're not gonna use these wool head mops like we would on a painting coach or on a nicer surface. We're gonna use this brush because we wanna physically scrub all of this road grime and oxidation off of the coach. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, I wanna make a quick point about the brush. So if I use this brush, I'm gonna remove oxidation with the brush and when I'm done, I can take my pressure washer and I can just rinse this out and my brush is like new again. If I were to use this wool head mop, it's not gonna get the oxidation off. It's gonna contaminate my wool head mop with a bunch of oxidation and dirt. And then when I go and use this on a nice coach, like a painting coach or a newer gel coat, then all that crap is gonna be stuck in here and it's gonna smear all over the nice surface. So that's why I save these for a surface that is already pristine. When the surface is oxidized, such as this one, I don't bother using my wool head mop because I save that for the coaches that deserve it. All right, y'all, so first thing I'm gonna do, I start by cleaning the wheels. I'm starting on the passenger side underneath the awning side first, then I'll go to the roof. The reason I do that is because when I'm done washing the wheels, I want my hose on the opposite side of the awning. If my hose, when I finish, was on the awning side, I would have to run my hose out again and bring it back because when I'm on the roof, I can't pull my hose up if, I, if my hose is on the awning side, if that makes sense. It needs to be on the clear side with no awning, okay? So let's get to washing these tires. Purple power. Um, and you'll see what I do to clean it.
wheel, take the same brush, clean out this lip inside this wheel well fender. Now this client just picked this up from a dealership. They got some kind of really good coating on here. It's super sticky and the soap didn't stick at all. It's grabbing my brush, so that's pretty much useless. Show you this roof real quick super sketchy it's pure ice so if you are getting on the roof be extremely careful because this turns into like an ice skating rink okay i'm just gonna use the pressure washer to knock off some of this ice before i get started Facebook posts and YouTube videos, people saying, oh, don't bring a pressure washer on the roof. They say, just use the deck brush and, and simple green or the deck brush and whatever product they recommend using. Um, but they're completely full of shit. If you don't use a pressure washer on the roof, you are not going to get it clean, okay? Now, yes, when you get around these plastic components like that, be extremely careful, especially if they look weathered. I'm rinsing these, I'm keeping a distance about like that. So by the time the water reaches the plastic, it's fanned out a lot and it doesn't have a lot of pressure behind it. When I'm washing these black components, like, like the fridge vent and the AC cover, stuff like that, I can be pretty much as aggressive with it as I want. It's no problem. The awning is usually no problem unless it's really crispy from being uh, sunbaked. But for the actual roof skin itself, this stuff is extremely tough. I can get within two to three inches of it without problems. Um, obviously, if the roof is in really bad shape, use your judgment. Don't go based on what I'm saying. You gotta use your judgment and discretion. But if you don't use a pressure washer on the roof, you are not gonna get it clean with just a brush and soap. This roof in particular was really easy to clean because it's coated. It has this Henry's uh, like mastic style coating on it. If it didn't have that, this roof would take me easily 30 minutes to clean. I would have to pressure washer every single square inch of it. So keep that in mind. Use discretion, use caution, use common sense, but you're gonna have to use a pressure washer to get it clean. Okay, now that I'm done with the roof, I'm gonna go to the front of the coach and start. I like to start from the furthest point from the truck, work my way back toward the truck. So I'm gonna start at the front. This method is a little bit controversial, but um, this customer picked this up in Louisiana and it's got bugs everywhere. And they drove it back to California. So this is what I do. I take a foam cannon with bug remover in it. I'm gonna spray it all over the whole front of this thing. Let it sit for a second, then foam cannon dawn on top of it, and then get to scrubbing. But bug remover can be a really powerful soap, and it can be kind of dangerous on some finishes, so use your discretion. Do a test spot before you try this. This is, this is the method I use, and I haven't had any problems with it, so let's do it.
point out a couple things really quick. Um, outdoor speakers. I do wash them, but when I'm spraying them out, I keep about a three to four foot distance from the tip of the pressure washer wand to the speaker. I'm not trying to put any kind of forced water pressure in there. I am getting it wet because it, it is an outdoor speaker. It can get wet, but I'm not forcing the water in there. I'm shooting it from a distance, letting the water just kind of flow in there. Then we got these other like um, exhaust fan. This is for the hot water heater. This is for the fridge. These kinds of things lead into the interior of the RV and they lead to appliances like fridge, heater, hot water heater. So you do not want to blast water in those. As you can see, there's still some soap lingering around in the openings. I'm not worried about it. I can wipe it out with a rag. But when I do rinse these, you'll notice I try to stand as tall as I can and I get the pressure washing one and I shoot it down at an angle. So I am flowing some water into there. Again, I'm not getting close, just like the speakers. I'm not getting close, I'm keeping my distance and I'm angling the water down so that it just kind of flows over these areas and doesn't pressure into those areas. So it does rinse the soap out, but doesn't force water inside the appliances in the RV. Super important, okay? Another thing is you will notice all over the exterior is little just protrusions, you know, all these different knobs, these different cabinet holders, lights, um, water connections, plug covers, all those kinds of things. When you're scrubbing them down, you want to be really careful with them. You don't want to bump your, uh, so the plastic housing of this brush, if you just jam it, I picked a bad RV to film because it is a busy street and it is loud, but bear with me. You do not want to slam the housing of the brush head into those things because they will snap off, especially on an oxidized coach. If they've seen the sun and they're broken down and brittle from the sun, they are going to snap if you run into them. So keep that in mind. Okay, the final step that I'm going to do for just the wash is I'm going to clean all the windows with glass cleaner and a microfiber, which I'll show you how I do one of them. And if for someone at home, like a DIY guy that might be doing this at home, you're probably just using tap water. You cannot wash it how I'm washing it with just tap water. I'm using deionized spot free water. So I'm able to just wash it and just let it drip dry. Now, as I do some other things like the wheels and the glass and the awning arms and stuff like that, I can dry some things as I go. I can use my leaf blower or my chamois or a big microfiber drying towel, whatever I choose. Um, but I'm not stressing about it. You guys at home that are using tap water, I would break this thing up into quarters. So I would do the back as one piece, I would do the front as one piece and I would dry those. And then the sides I would break up into two or three sections each. And as I'm done rinsing them, I would dry it. Otherwise you're gonna get really bad water spots, okay? And then when you're done drying the whole thing, you need to pay attention because all these cabinet, all these cabinet doors, windows and whatnot, they hold water in them and they'll drip out again. So make sure you're checking up on it every 30 minutes or so, every hour or so with a rag and drying those spots off, okay? All right, Joe, so like I was saying, I like to take my leaf blower and <clears throat> blow air into those spots to get the water out. Another thing you'll want to do is get your ladder and run the leaf blower in the rain gutter because that thing's just going to keep dripping. So just run the leaf blower through there a couple times. Try to blow as much of that water out as you can. All right, y'all. So here's what I do to dry it. <clears throat> I got my glass cleaner. I got my microfiber for the windows. And I got a big microfiber drying towel. So when I get to the windows to do my glass cleaning, I just keep a rag or I keep this big microfiber drying towel with me and I dry everything I can reach while I'm here because I might as well, right? Then I just take my glass cleaner, mist it on the window. I keep a wet side and a dry side. So I'll, we'll, we'll say this is the wet side. Just 
buff out the whole window with the rag, then flip it to your dry side and soak up any remaining moisture that's left on there. And if it's morning time, like it is here for me now, the air is still kind of moist, you might have to flip it again and get a final dry side to officially like actually get the remaining streaks off. All right, so that's all I do for the windows. If it has water spots on it, I might try a water spot remover. I might buff it. You get it, that's the basics of it. Windows are easy. That's about all I do. So I got this all dried. I got the windows clean. And the last step is I'm going to spray wax these awning arms. If you've never used spray wax before, you literally, you literally just spray it on and wipe it off. So it works as a really good cleaner and it offers a little bit of protection. Not great protection, but the main purpose is to just help you get some final touches cleaned up. That's it. Final step, a little spray wax to the wheel. And tire dressing. That's it. All right, y'all, so that is a wrap for a wash on this thing. I'm gonna give you a quick little walk around and show you the final results. And uh, I am actually going to be detailing this thing. I'm doing a cut and buff. I'm going to be uh, restoring this flat surface, bringing it, bringing it back. But due to time constraints, I'm not gonna be filming it. And I just gotta get this thing done and get on to the next one. So here's a quick little walk around so you can see the results and again, Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for future videos. Please subscribe and I appreciate all your support. Here we go. So one thing I want to point out real quick is just how nice and it's still chalky. It's still, it's not chalky, but it's still flat. But look, when I wipe it, no chalk comes up on my hand. It's a nice flat, even surface now with no chalk. So before when you went like this, you're getting road grime and chalk on your hands. Now the chalk is completely gone. It's nice and balanced and even looking sexy, ready for a detail now.
quick side note, it's hilarious to me that people carry around bags of their dog shit. Literally, just mobbing around with a bag of dog shit. I love dogs, and I would walk my dog if I had a dog still, but I ain't carrying around a bag of dog shit, okay? Just saying. <laughs>